once you make someone feel visible, you have the opportunity to tell their story better. Um, and you want everyone to look at something and say, this not only looks like me, but looks like the best version of me. Yeah, what up, dude? You all right? <laughs> it's been a long morning dude, for you. I know, it has been. All right, what is up, everyone? Okay, today we are uh, in New York City. We are in a studio with an amazing photographer and friend named Andre Leroux, and today is all about shooting skin tones. Skin tones is like, in my mind, a differentiating factor between like an amateur photographer and a, a professional photographer. So today, we're gonna focus on darker skin tones, how to nail them, how to make sure it's lit perfectly and look really good. So we'll, we'll be shooting uh, right here with some studio light, and then we're gonna pop over to the other side of the studio, shoot with some natural light. We'll also be shooting on a DSLR and a phone, because these tips are gonna work for both devices, um, both cameras, so it'll be awesome for you to learn both. I'm gonna quit talking, and here's Andre. Shooting at any darker skin tones isn't, it can be difficult, but it's not necessarily um, something that's unpopular so much as I think that um, it's a really kind of segregated thing that we just do. We shoot what's around us. So um, most people live in proximity with other people that look like them. And as the internet is pushing us to new places, um, we want to be able to tell other stories. And to do that, we need to be able to capture other people's skin well and care about it. Um, and a lot of it's just effort, you know? Wow, that's awesome. So we have a split studio. Over here is a cyclorama, which is like this really sweet white backdrop that's like painted into the wall that we're gonna take advantage of. And then over here, we're gonna split this over and do some controlled light and kind of talk to you about what to expect. We're doing mobile and DSLR photography, so get excited. Um, trying to start, you guys, this is Nigella. Hi. Nigella lives in New York. She's a yeah. stylist and a barber, um, and she has really, really rad skin. And so from Jump, um, my basic setup is this. It's a beauty dish and it's a hair light. <clears throat> the hair light, basically what's gonna happen is it gives a little bit of light in the background, but it just kind of kisses the top of Nigella's head and her hair so that there's a separation between the background and the front. And then this is my main light, which you can see how different it looks as I move in and out. And there's a nice diffusion on it. So it's nice and soft and it's on her face. I leave the continuous light on so you can see where the light's going. And then the strobe pops each time you do it like this. So we're using these Alien Beasts today. Um, these are actually pretty inexpensive lights. Um, if you need to use them or want to use studio lights, um, these can really help. A bunch of my friends have them in home studios. And like obviously the pro photos are great and ones we'd recommend, but I've been using these since I was 19 and they have not broken. So <laughs> I'd recommend it. Any DSLR with a hot shoe, you can use these things called pocket wizards. And basically instead of having a cord, um, instead of plugging right into that, you can use these, and up here you can set the channel so it has like 10 different channels and numbers. And so these are on the same one. And so when you hit test on this, it starts to flash. And basically that just allows you to move around with more freedom. These are really nice because then you can kind of adjust light as you see fit. And the biggest thing with strobes you want to pay attention to is what the um, amount of light they're emitting is. So this is a beauty dish, and the amount of light is very specific. Um, it's out a little bit, but it's centered right. There. Okay, so since we're doing natural light on one side and a studio setup on this side, I don't want to mix the light sources because then the camera will be confused with the white balance. And if you're setting the white balance, it needs to set on one, one kind of light. So it's important that we clip these to make sure that the light I'm taking is this primarily, or it'll look really blue or really yellow. <laughs> Why the, um, the backdrop matters. Um, you'll see this when I take this right here, where you look right here. Eyes up a little bit. So the first thing you want to look at is, is there clear detail between where her hair ends and where the background starts? And that's important because if not, you're robbing someone of their hair detail. Just like you wouldn't shoot a blonde person on a really, really white background, you don't want to shoot someone with dark <coughs> colored hair on a black or a gray because it'll just fall off. When I was in college, I had to shoot all of the athletes in the county and I didn't use a hair light. And so 75% of those kids were like face and then they could have had the afro the size of Julius Irving. So um, <laughs> since we're shooting on phone and um, DSLR, we actually have the lights on continuous so you can use them to light this. And the idea is obviously to get the most light that we can. Um, and you can see how well it's, it's nicely sitting here. If you look into the phone, you can see the light draping this way. And then that hair light is coming and just giving that little detail. Now that her hair is forward, it's giving a little detail on her face, which is really helpful. 
so you can see every part of her skin. You can still have like shadows and detail and like all that fun um, internet fade, but you just want to make sure everyone looks like they want to look. See, um, one of the big tells is if you get variation of light, so you can see this like nice bright here and some shadows here, but you can still see every part of her skin. Look at you, just looking elegant as all hell. <laughs> So undertones are also, obviously we all have our skin tones that we can see, brown, you know, whatever. Um, but undertones are, you can have warm ones and cool ones or neutral ones. And basically it helps you kind of figure out what clothes you wear really well. So like if you have warm tones, you can wear a lot of earth tones. If you have cool tones, you can wear kind of some blues and some silvers. Okay. Um, so do you think you look better in silver or gold? That's one way to figure it out. That's a good question. I think I sometimes, it depends. I think I might look better in silver, but sometimes gold be popping, so. So if you're unsure, if you just go ahead and pull your wrists up, this can be difficult to do, but if you pull your wrists up and you look, um, you can always see people's veins. And if your veins are a little more blue, and it can be kind of hard to tell here, but you can always do it on yourself. If your veins are a little bit more blue, you have a cool undertone, if they're a little greener, you have a warm undertone. So <clears throat> the background we chose today is pink, which is actually a slightly cooler tone because it's more of a pastel. Um, and so your tones, I can't really tell as clearly, so you're more neutral, which means we can kind of do some of each. And so we want to get something that like has some nice variation to it. Um, I really like this denim jacket. And since we're doing a lighter pink, it can actually be cool to do these, these two things. So we'll kind of go from there. Done and done. And undertones, you can tell everyone, everything's different for each person, but <clears throat> having contrasting ones can be interesting. So if you shoot someone who has warm tones on a cool background or vice versa, there can be like a sense of color conflict, which is really nice. Um, and if you do them together, it's like a sense of harmony. And so you'll see that <clears throat> now the hair light's actually being used to provide that detail that you can see right there, right above her eye. And then the beauty dish is used to cover this part of her face, but it gives you that nice light white point on her eye. Um, and so obviously as things move, you still wanna make sure there's detail. So the, the two light setup is being used to bring her off of the background and shooting it at a short aperture at a 2.8 is also super helpful. And now you can't focus on on your phone necessarily, but when you use portrait mode, which I was using before, or using the Moment app, <clears throat> you can control more things and give yourself that light to shadow and focus ratio that you want. All right, so it's important to note that for the natural light, the only source we have is just this massive window and then a lot of light reflecting off all this white. So if you don't have a studio, that's something that's very attainable. You, you find a white room, big, big window, and you're in. Oh yeah, what's up? We got sp special guest Tyson Wheatley here. Hi. If you haven't booked a trip, it's out of focus. If you haven't booked a trip to Hong Kong, we got the plug in, here There's it is. There's two more spots left for the trip to Hong Kong, come and join me. I just met him and he's really nice and he's a great photographer and he's been to Hong Kong a bunch, so like, yeah. that seems like a good trip. Hey, look at this. That's all awesome. Dog. Oh. This is Jet. Yeah. Everything is white in here, you're getting all this beautiful light that's bouncing off of things, but if you don't have that option, what you can do is you can use a reflector. So a reflector's pretty cool, it like bends into itself. Alyssa's is holding it, but I'm just gonna show you this. Um, and you can kind of carry it everywhere and it's super light. Um, the silver side gets a little bit brighter light, but this is really nice. It gives you a nice little bounce to kind of fill in spots. So as she gets closer, you can see just how the light changes here. If you don't have that, you can use a poster board. You can use anything that's really white to do it. Um, and if you're like super desperate, you can just have the model put a white t-shirt on. <laughs> but I wouldn't advise that as your first step. <laughs> Like we said, we're using mostly this window light, but um, I'm getting a little bit of shadow on most of Jordan's face because he's only getting illuminated with about a third of his face that's a little close to the window. So Alyssa's using this reflector just to give nice detail in this, just this under spot, just so it doesn't completely lose it. Um, here, since his skin is darker, you have to remember that your camera is um, trying to expose for 11% gray, and obviously darker skin is darker than gray. And um, if you don't give that um, extra bit of light, you're just losing detail. It's gonna look similar to it, but you're not gonna get the level of image that you want. Um, 
It's just like if you are shooting and it's too bright outside and use a V-flat or use something to just cut the light so it's nice and dark, just so you make sure that person's skin is okay if they're a little bit lighter. Um, you wanna use extra light here just to make sure that everyone's skin looks as it should. I'm just rotating them a little bit so I can get a little more light on them. Um, <clears throat> so we're just gonna, guys, come this way a little bit. Angle, angle. That's perfect. All right, okay, so we have finished shooting. Um, it went super well, the photos look amazing. And right now we're gonna go grab some food, um, eat, because we're just starving, and, um, Hi. And then Andre is going to give you um, some editing tips. So you had your shooting tips, a bunch of great stuff. Now we're going to tap into editing and post-processing and what you need to do to polish those images and make them look amazing in post. All right, let's go. All right, so uh, I, I, I said we were going to go eat. We are still going to do that, but I want to put the camera away because it's been a long day. So uh, we're going to get to his... He got here at five. Yeah, it's been bad. So it's been long. But we're going to get to his editing tips right now. Let's do it. Hey guys, so things that you want to keep in, in mind when you're editing, um, first of all, you want to use the dodge and the burn tool. So um, the hot key for that on the computer is the O key, but basically all it does is dodge just helps you brighten up an area and burn helps you darken it. And so <clears throat> if you're having a hard time and you're shooting multiple people um, that have various skin tones, you want to set the exposure for the person in the middle tone, and then you can use the dodge tool to go ahead and brighten up anything that's too dark, and then burn to use anything that's too light. Um, there's a little slider you can always use to increase or decrease the harshness. I would always tell you, make sure to decrease the harshness and just you can go over it a couple times and just kind of see what works. <clears throat> Don't make it look unnatural, but it's always super helpful. Another thing to keep in mind is like, employ the highlight slider. So like I told you, um, a good way to have know you have a great image of a person of any tone is that on their skin you can see a spectrum of light to mid-tone to shadow. <clears throat> and when you, if you're having a hard time making sure the person is exactly what you want, editing-wise, you can go ahead and use the highlight slider to just bring up a little bit of it. It's important for you to know the difference between highlight and shadow versus whites and blacks. Whites and blacks sets the white point and the black point in the image. Highlights and shadows edit the brightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image. So if you're having a hard time and you think something is too dark, before you play with the exposure, go ahead and see what it looks like when you bring the shadows maybe from a negative to a plus or bring the highlights down toward a negative number just to see how it looks. You can then say, okay, well, how does this look in terms of this person's skin? Because not only do you want it to be exposed right, but you want like a dynamic range. One thing you want to keep in mind, especially with your undertones, is how if you're filtering, how that affects um, how the skin looks. So one thing you can do is, you can do it on mobile or on the computer, specifically I'm speaking to Lightroom, they have the color mixer tool, and if you go down to it, you can adjust the orange, the yellow, and the red. Those are the primary colors in our skin tones, and if for whatever reason you, you have a filter you really like, but it feels like this person's skin tone is warped heavily, you can just increase or decrease that orange slider in a way that makes it look a little bit nicer. So you can use the luminance as well as the saturation. So if it's too dark, you can bring the luminance up, and if it's too muddy, you can bring the saturation down. Those are just some things you can do to help, and you primarily do have the orange slider and color mixer, um, or, um, another thing you can do is you can also play with the tint, which is in the white balance area, to increase the pink or the green just so it makes sure it's close to that person's natural skin tone. Uh, thanks for watching. That about wraps it up. Big thanks to Andre. Those photos are insane. And gosh, I mean, hopefully you guys are blessed for, kn for knowing more about skin tones and how to shoot them. Yes. Thanks, dude. Yeah, and I took a picture of Niles. You can see it at his handle um, somewhere. <laughs> new, at Niles Gray. New, new Facebook pro pic. All right, we're out. <laughs> Bye.